All right, hi guys. As you can see, a little bit different setup today. Today I'm at Microps Industries, and we're going to talk a little bit about one of their products called Murai. I gotta say, I've seen it on a trade show, and that kind of uh, get me going because I do know a little bit of uh, machine vision. I work with many different systems, but what I've seen uh, kind of catch my eye, and I wanted to know more. And today we're here. Uh, we're here with CJ from Microps Industries. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, we're going to go a little bit over what is their product about. So basically, like I said, classic machine vision is one thing, but you guys kind of uh, step it up with the Murai product. Uh, you're going to see the product performing live on the video, but we're going right now to take a look a little bit into how difficult and what's the difference between the classic machine vision and the product that you guys have. What is the biggest kind of like advantage yeah. and how does your product basically work? Definitely. So yeah, we are an AI software company. I mean, the big difference between us and a regular vision system is a regular vision system takes a photo or a series of photos and then puts together a, a predetermined path for a robot to follow. What we're actually doing is we're taking in about 15 frames a second from one or two different cameras on the, on the robot and then adjusting that, uh, that position of the robot after every frame. So you're able to get live feedback based on what you're getting from like what it's seeing in that actual uh, production environment. And it's able to deal with a lot of different variances and uh, changes to an environment that a regular vision system wouldn't be able to handle. I see. I see. Yeah, there was actually one thing that was very important. You guys see a little bit of a short videos. How do we train the system? And I was pretty mm -hmm. impressed because oh, when you have like a regular vision system, the classic machine vision system, yep. what I think and like what I remember is you need to have the calibration grids. Then once you have the calibration grid, then you have to train the camera to the calibration of it, yeah. grid to get rid of like the lens distortion and so on. Uh, then you have to tell the robot where the calibration is. So like it knows the frame that it works with, within, where it's X positive, Y positive. So like it's a pretty long and time consuming process. Whereas we've done the teaching in here and mm -hmm. uh, you guys will see it in a second. And that took us just a few minutes just to teach the vision system how it's going to pick and see the object. Like, can you a little bit uh, tell us the process? Like, how does it look like from your perspective and yep. like from the customer, like how hard or how easy it is to set it up when you get it the first time? Definitely. Yeah, so what we're going to be showing you guys a little bit later is a very simple demo. I'm just going to be picking up a, a USB stick on there. For that type of application, like you said, we probably spent about 10 minutes or so for the entire process of going from the setup of the, of like the cameras on there to the training of the skill. So the amount of time that it takes to do a very simple demo is very, very short. Um, but then even for like a more complex application where you're actually putting this into a production environment, you're looking at days, not months, not weeks. Like you're going to be looking at this over like a very much shorter amount of time which is huge for like someone like you where <laughs> like like with these engineers like the less time it takes like the less money that the company is spending and less like headaches that you guys are having we're going to be able to get this installed in an application much quicker than a traditional vision system can be yeah that's a that, that's a very good point they wanted to touch on because from my experience again i've done quite a few classic machine visions mm -hmm. and just the setup itself, and we're not talking about teaching the pictures. Yeah. Uh, the thing I mentioned, putting the calibration grid in the right place, then getting the position right, and so on and so on. Even that takes, takes time, mm -hmm. uh, while your system seems to get rid of that problem. So again, like much, much less engineering hours needed to start up the system. Uh, plus, then I've seen it working. So basically, the user itself doesn't do much. It's just like a click like a play and record and the system does grab all of the data and then uses the cloud to process it and we just wait. So if that was like a real production line, like an assembly line, uh, you come in during the lunch break, basically you need that half an hour, mm -hmm. you just do the first teaching of the first episode, then uh, the line can run again. Then the next uh, lunch comes, you can do one more episode or However, skill, uh, however episodes you want to train to mm -hmm. teach the skill. And once that's done, basically you can say the system is ready to go. Whereas with the classic vision, 
that you're not allowed to do that. Like you need the time, you need the shutdown, you need more time to implement it. That one is like blink of an eye and it's done. I think it's great that you're able to do the cloud calculation. So basically you send everything to the cloud and then the robot can work because that doesn't affect the production, right? Like the exactly. entire process of sending and assuming that the data doesn't really mm. need any additional movements from the robot. Everything is done online, we can say actually. Yep. And then what's good also, like you don't need the system to be connected online all, all the time, right? So like once it's done, then it's kind of like plug and play. Correct. Yeah, exactly. So like you were mentioning that, like, in, like while you guys are on lunch breaks or while there's like a break in production, things like that, that's when the actual like training and collection of the data can, uh, mm -hmm. can uh, occur. And then once it actually goes to the cloud where like the heavy lifting of like the, uh, the algorithms are happening, that can be done while it's actually in production uh, or while, while things are moving. Once it's actually like out online, it's in production, it's moving, there's no need for an internet connection at all. So much less of like an IT nightmare yep. of uh, making sure that, that it needs to be connected at all times. It's just during that initial training and setup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that, uh, that's great. Also, one more thing that I was quite impressed with, and you guys are going to see it on the videos, is it seems like your system does not really care about the outside lighting. Yeah. So once the lighting on your side is there, then we can uh, use any type of either artificial light or natural light, and the system seems not to care. I think that's like a huge thing because I deal with so many vision applications, and then always like the reflections or a little bit of natural light coming out from the roof or side windows mm -hmm. will throw the application up, but your application seems, seems to carry that basically with no issue at all. Like mm -hmm. as we've actually seen, and you guys are going to see in a second. It's wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I was. I gotta say, like that's that's a big step forward yeah and then i see that your application can also handle very complex tasks so mm -hmm. like there's a lot of things that i've seen in particular for assembly lines mm -hmm. like seed assemblies or any other electronic assemblies that are very hard to handle with a classic vision because there is no like perspective on there like the depth of perspective and what mm -hmm. you can see in the part is hard to show in the classic vision, yep. but I think that your system can handle pretty much a complex task fairly easily compared to machine vision. So again, the engineering hours needed to be used to like train the vision or like sometimes you even cannot accomplish a task mm -hmm. in the machine vision. In your case, seems to be just like a quick go. Like, I don't think, I don't think there is a uh, application that would be very hard to implement in here because you guys will see in a second, like even a complex application, like a cable insertion. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be a issue for the system. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. I mean, with enough data, we're taking in this, this real world data. So it's not relying on CAD data at all. This is really just coming down to what you are showing in that, uh, in that environment. So that's why it, we're able to do like the, uh, the different types of like lighting scenarios. Because it's not thrown off by the, like, like the outside light coming from here or the artificial light that we've shown it. It knows what to do in those situations because it's coming from that real world data. And that's why we're able to do the, like the more complex tasks as well. I see. Like plugging in cables. Typically, that's a really typical application because these things can be in any of these different positions. In any different like lighting scenario, there's just so much variance that comes from a, an application like that our system is able to ignore those different variations around it, just focus on the part itself. And now from like a setup perspective, right? If a customer approaches you and says, hey, I would like to implement that system onto our robots. Mm -hmm. uh, what robot brands do you guys work with? So currently Mirai is, we're capable of working with anything from six axes with universal robots, with Fanuc or with KUKA. Um, so that's anywhere, we're gonna be showing a, a bunch of collaborative applications, cobot applications, we're able to work with, with industrials as well. So there's ways to do it where you can even work on like a FANUC, like R2000 or something even bigger than that with, with anything with six axes. Okay. Okay. That's great. And then how about the engineering part, like the mounts, the cameras, the lighting, mm -hmm. uh, do you guys help uh, the customer to select all of that or the customer? Yeah. To so it? we are like, we handle all the software. But we can also provide you with the, the hardware needed to run 
our software properly on there. So we will provide you with the, the cameras, the controller, like the IPC, and then all of the lighting that's, uh, that's needed, like the ring light awesome. around the, uh, the lens as well. Awesome. So you guys basically can deliver like a ready solution for a customer. Like if somebody approaches you and says, hey, I have robots, there's a lot of stuff that we like to automate, but like the machine vision was not good enough. I need something that's able to handle my task. Could you help us out? Then you say, sure. Yep. We'll take, come, take a look. We'll show you, we, we show you what we can do. We can help you with the lighting and everything. You don't have to worry about yeah. anything pretty much. And you guys are like supporting. Yeah. I mean, we're going to, we're going to hold your hand through the whole thing. Like from, from the beginning, when we come in, we're going to be like, like looking over the application with you, making sure that this is a good application for Mirai. But then uh, once it's actually confirmed, we're doing the testing, purchasing, the implementation support, we're there the entire way. Um, so we're going to help you make sure that it's a, that it's a successful implementation. And we're also going to teach you how to actually work with it. So for the future, you don't need to rely on us so much. We're always going to be there if need, if, if need be, but we want to make sure that whoever's using the product is going to be able to work with it themselves and not have to rely on outside support as much. I see. I see. And then I guess one of the important questions for someone who'd like to implement that system is, do you guys provide like documentation and some type of remote support or just like an on-phone call, like, hey, yeah. I have an issue with the system. Can you help us out? Do you guys have uh, that Definitely. Type of- yeah, we're able to, to remote in if you want. It's a toggle on the, on the software. Mm-hmm. So we're able to look into the actual box if need be, and then also be able to uh, help out uh, via uh, phone support as well if need be. I see. I see. That's great. That's great. I mean, what else can I say, guys? If you have any questions, you would like to know a little bit more about the Murai or the microsp- uh, microbiology industries, feel free to contact CJ or sales. Everything will be li- linked down in the description of that video. So feel free to contact. Of course, CJ is go- also going to follow on the video. So if you have any questions, feel free just to leave a comment. He'll be happy to respond or anybody else from the company. And I think that's it for now. And I guess let's get to the good part. Let's do some testing. Let's see how the system works. And it's good. then you guys will know what all of this is about. Perfect. Cool. Thank you so much. Let's go. Let's have some fun. Perfect.